The clutch works, I've got the pedal pressed. Let's go. Wooden flywheel, is it gonna work? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. It's over! Hey there, fellas. Okay, so just like I promised last time, now you remember how this car drove around on a clutch disc with plywood friction lining, right? We've removed the box and everything else. And so here's the clutch disc. It looks pretty... Honestly, I thought it would be much worse. But as a matter of fact, even all of the writing and the tiny images are still very much visible. Yeah, the wear actually isn't that bad. Despite the wooden aroma in the cabin being very pronounced indeed. Enough so to come through despite the engine smoke making it into the car. Anyway, so we took everything apart. And a curious idea occurred to us. So while we're at it, why not make a flywheel? I mean, out of wood, of course. And then piece everything back together, complete with a clutch disc and a flywheel made from wood. And go for a drive afterwards. As for making a pressure plate out of wood, that's not happening. It's just a bit too complicated. It's not gonna work if we make it from wood. As for the flywheel and the clutch disc, well... Now that should... We already have a disc. And a flywheel should be a piece of cake. So yeah, let's go ahead and make ourselves one. To see how all of this works. Let's do this. Okay, fellas, so check this out. We've made a flywheel on a machine, everything's good. We've decided to make it a bit thicker in order for it to handle the stress. So we place the pressure plate like so. As I'm sure you know, the throwout bearing exerts quite a bit of pressure. Our main problem at the moment is working out whether this piece will withstand that pressure. I guess we'll learn once we get everything mounted. Another small but important detail is the ring gear on the stock flywheel which is what the starter motor uses to spin the engine. Well, unfortunately, we couldn't do a ring gear on this one. We couldn't figure out how you even install it onto here. Even if you glue it on, which we did try to do, steel doesn't stick to wood for some reason. You're obviously not gonna weld it on, so yeah. Well, it's not that big of a concern. After all, you can always push start a car. Okay, I say we go ahead and throw everything back together and see how it works. Let's get to it. Right, so as you just saw, we've got everything assembled. It's all looking really good. The only thing left to do now is fire it up. So we're about to start the car. Which means we'll need to push it. That's all due to there being no ring gear on the flywheel. And no worries. I'm pretty sure we can easily get it to start. We'll push it around as much as we need to. No sweat. Let's go. All right, it works. What the hell? What's that noise? I don't get it. It sounds like we have interference. But where exactly? Okay, so I've engaged reverse. It is slowly creeping backwards. I'm guessing that's down to us making the flywheel a bit thicker. Though I still have no idea what that could be. Whatever. No biggie. What matters is we're moving. And I'm actually moving at a pretty decent pace. This is nice. The car drives. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
When I let go of the clutch pedal, the noise gets much worse. And we've got smoke. Though it does move without issue. Here we are, happily driving along. So that wooden flywheel actually works. What do you know? And let's not forget that it's complemented by that wooden clutch disc. The one we meet from plywood. I can really smell the wood, though. Why does it make that noise when I dump the clutch? Those who know, go ahead and pause the video and tell us what could be making that noise. Seriously, I have no idea what that could be. Specifically, when I let the pedal go. Hopefully you guys can also hear that noise. I press the pedal, it's gone. I release it, it comes back. Okay, looks like we figured everything out. Apparently it's the throw-out bearing. We are using a slightly different pressure plate, one from a lot of Neva. Maybe I should go a bit crazy. Though who knows what that could lead to. Oh, wow! The motor ain't pulling. Look at how fast the revs fall. The reason for that probably being... We are basically running a lightweight flywheel. Meaning that engine speed should be much quicker to go up and down. Though if I'm being honest, I really didn't notice it going up and down the rev range any faster. Maybe a tiny bit. Let me just... It's over! No movies tonight! The batteries are dead. There you go, fellas. Isn't that nice? We've got smoke. It's all good. Looks like the clutch disc fell apart. Shit. Then again, I did just give it some revs with the clutch pedal in. We're talking considerable stress here. Now here's what's up. I set off once. As for the second attempt, I thought I'd feed it some more throttle input to get the revs up. But in the end, here we can see bits of our flywheel. So does it work or not? The answer is quite simple. No, it does not. Let's get this thing onto a lift. There you have it. So here is what's left of our flywheel. The pressure plate and disc are still attached. It is totally boned. Maybe the disc is still okay. But otherwise, we have no survivors. No surprises there. Since the material we used here is, well, let me put it this way. We couldn't find a piece of lumber fit for the purpose. So we bought some glued timber. But then again, I mean these modern glues. If you recall, those pistons we made a while back, those we made from glued ash. We put those to the test, and they weren't even close to breaking. Well, only at the seam where the pieces were glued together. Here we're using beech wood, which is just as durable a material. Nevertheless, here we are. It's broken. Now I suggest we have a look at the gearbox. When the flywheel fell apart, the casing took a bit of a beating. As you can see, here's the spot that took the brunt of the impact. The bell housing literally cracked open. A piece of it fell off. We saw wood chips on the pavement, which were obviously from the flywheel. As for the aluminum bits, those used to be attached to the bell housing. Oh man, this used to be a good gearbox. So those are the consequences of using a wooden flywheel. Now you guys obviously remember that wooden clutch disc, which turned out pretty amazing. I mean, you did get that burnt wood smell, but it worked fairly decently. We didn't get so lucky with the flywheel, though. Yeah, things didn't work out with the wooden flywheel. Maybe if I had taken it easier, without dumping the clutch and revving up the motor, in that case it might have actually lasted for a while. I mean, the car was totally cool to drive around at low revs, 
But then again, we tried and it worked to an extent. I'd say this experiment was a tremendous success. That was pretty sweet. All in all, things went pretty well. The key thing is to not go crazy with throttle input, to keep the flywheel in one piece. Otherwise, it appears that it can actually handle careful driving. And that's all I have for you, fellows. Watch us, subscribe, send in your comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.